Okay, so now he turns in the letter to, and this is the juicy part that everybody, everybody just showed up today because they want they want us to talk about SSPX, mm. Society of Saint Pius <laughs> the Let's get the let's get the SSPX wars flaming again. You know, let's <laughs> let's get on Twitter and attack, call people schismatic and outside the church, as has happened to both of us, um, by people who, who um, I don't know if they're earnest. He says, the hidden and often silent work has been carried out by the Society of the St. Pius X, which deserves recognition for not having allowed the flame of tradition to be extinguished at a moment in which celebrating the ancient mass was considered subversive and a reason for excommunication. Its priests have been a healthy thorn in the side for a hierarchy that has seen in them an unacceptable point of comparison for the faithful, a constant reproach for the betrayal committed against the people of God, an inadmissible alternative to the new conciliar path. Mic drop. Boom. 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 So, you know, it's it's been a difficult last few months because, you know, Church Militant brought out their series of reports starting around Easter of 2020, uh, allegations of the society being uh, Nazi and a whole... I mean, at least a dozen or so uh, sexual scandals that were alleged. Right. And, and I mean, the hard, the difficult thing I think we're still trying to sift through is that there are some of the cases they discuss are act like historical cases that are documented. Yeah. They've been settled in court, but there are also new basic spec, basically speculation and a lot of hearsay. Unfortunately, a lot of the times it's presented as being all fact. And without doing that necessary separation of, okay, what are the historical actual documented cases versus what's being alleged now? Because there are a lot of things being alleged more recently that is a lot of he said, she said, and we don't know, you know, all the facts. There are, Stephen Cox actually from LifeSide is working, has been working for quite a while on um, doing a, a further investigation into some of those newer allegations. So we're looking forward to when he's able to publish his findings. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I think we should be patient. Uh, you know, Church Militant had months and months to to create their case. And uh, there should be months and, and also a response on the other side. Um, it, it seems that there is most certainly, most certainly uh, abuse that has happened uh, sexual, grave, disgusting, horrible, satanic abuse that has happened at the hands of priests of the Society of St. Pius X. They have had priests who have left the priesthood. They have had priests who have done violent and evil things. Right. And no one should make ex an excuse for that. I have said, Absolutely I don't care not. if a priest has, behind his name, if he has the letters FSSP, SJ, OP, Order of Preachers, OFM, Friars, Institute of Christ the King. I don't care what letters are behind his name. SSPX, if that priest molested kids, Jesus Christ already told us what to do with him. You get a big millstone, you yep. tie it around his neck, and you throw him in the ocean. I didn't make that up. That's what Christ, the second person of Trinity, said. Zero tolerance for sexual abuse in any group, any diocese, anywhere. I don't care if you're a pope, cardinal, archbishop, trad, not trad, whatever. If you use your authority, your spiritual authority as father, pater, and molest children, vulnerable adults, seminarians, whatever, I think you deserve the millstone in the, in the ocean. Absolutely. Right away, right away. But that and being said, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of cases that I think there needs to be some uh, more investigation, some answers, some questions and all that. And I th I'm comfortable waiting for, for the moment. I know that certain people want us to jump out and get our pitchforks and our torches and start burning down the town. But I, I think we need to take a little bit of prudence and ask some more questions and then find out. And if, let me say this, this is the big if, if leadership in the Society of St. Pius X lied, cheated, mishandled, did anything to cover up abuse, they need to publicly apologize and gracefully step down and go away. 
and, and maybe even be punished, you know, on, depending on the gravity of the situation, what happens. And that's true. Again, I don't care if you're the, the letters after your name are SSPX or FSSP or Institute Christ the King or SJ. Anyone in the hierarchy who, who participates in it needs to apologize and acknowledge it and then step down or maybe even be laicized. I don't know. Depends on, on the situation. Right. Yeah, I think the main point is that, um, you know, number one, we can't be naive and think that any particular order in the in the church is completely immune from this. I mean, the, the infiltration has gone to every nook and cranny of the church. Um, but as you say, we doesn't matter what the letters are after your name. You have to be held accountable for this. Absolutely. And I think the other very important point to remember in, in this discussion is that the presence of those uh, of certain wicked in, men among the Society of St. Pius X, if they are in fact guilty of what has been claimed, that doesn't nullify the historical record of, of what Archbishop Lefebvre and the Society have done, as Archbishop Vigano acknowledges, to preserve tradition. That's simply a fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah there, there are Dominicans who have molested children and Dominicans who have covered up abuse. I still love the Dominican order. Right. Right? I'm not going to say I will never attend a Dominican mass ever again. Right. And it's, it's, it's a principle because if you take that principle and you, and you extend it, right. You ultimately get to, well, I will never receive communion in this diocese or I will never receive communion in relation to the USCCB. Or but I will ultimately never... leads, it leads to a rejection of the entire hierarchy. Exactly. Of you you, you yeah. end up with sort of a reverse set of a contism at that point where you don't receive communion or go to mass anywhere. Right. You know, you could say, well, in, in Detroit, the bishop, you know, there was invalid baptisms. Right. So you should never attend liturgy in Detroit? I don't think that's the conclusion. Certainly not the correct one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, right. the, the correct solution is find orthodoxy, find where the sacraments are reverently right. and validly celebrated and go there. Right. 